Now here are the parts of my Kopia or my Polish lance. As I going, I'm going to tell you here in the in the little bit the overall length, but it was their real ones were anywhere between five and nine meters long. It all depended on how long uh, the preference was for each troop and of that individual hussars. But you know they are making them out of saplings on the march, so you know nature is want to not be obedient in having providing uniform lengths. So this one is because it also is going to fit on the the back wall of my house when it's done and displayed <clears throat> it's 16 feet 4 inches long when it's all put together now the construction materials are two pieces of railing banner I got at a local hardware store they're an inch and a quarter wide and they both total together 16 feet 4 inches because that's roughly the measurement of this one uh, lance that's in the Polish War Museum it's a little over 5 meters long or sorry, four meters long. So, I'll give you a close up here of this. Now, the palm, or the handguard, is a toilet float. It's not finished yet. I haven't painted all the uh, embellishments on it. But with the first shot that I showed you when I, on here was we were 10 feet away. So, from 10 feet away, it looks pretty good. I can, I can handle the 10 foot rule. Now, that's just painted on with uh, alternating strips of white and red that I did with some painter's tape and some spray paint. The lance head is not correct, but there's no one that makes them in the U.S. unless I want to have to pay for a custom made one, so I'm going to have to wait on that, but it, the lance head is from Windless Steel. Part of the project was to have a breakdown lance. It has a screw head in it, but one of the problems I've run into is that it doesn't want to connect very tightly or very well, and as you can see the alternating stripes here on the inside there's different kinds of wood and when I tried to drill in the wood gives a different rate so it kept sliding off the stiffer darker colored stripes in the middle and, and sliding off center so that's so if you use, elect to use this issue I'm sorry if you elect to use this wood in the future you may have that problem as well I zoomed in here on the handguard to show you that it's hollow at the moment which is why it's kind of dented there um, it's going to be filled with a spray insulation that expands and hardens. I'm going to fill it so that it doesn't get dented because it's just a very, very thin copper. And I don't want it to get completely destroyed rolling around in the back of my van while I'm transporting it. I don't yet have all the uh, alternating trim that's going to be painted onto this. And in fact, I don't like I, the fact that it, the white stripe looks short. So I'm going to extend that stripe a little bit more maybe another foot and then I'm gonna put a white bar at the bottom of that and then in the middle it's gonna have these this gold vine leafy kind of vine pattern painted in in between alternating white bars in sections up and down the length of the lance modeled on one that's in the Stockholm roll from 1605 I wanted to point out something else that I ran into I uh, if I was in the saddle I realized that the, where I had the handguard placed originally was going to hit me in the knee continuously and uh, that would be kind of irritating. So I talked to Sir, Sir Kiram, who is now known as Sir William because he is a, a, a pro jouster and I, I asked him some questions about how they would put the handguard together for a lance and don't you know they put it together so that that part wouldn't hit you in the knee. So <clears throat> as much as the, I made the lance to be kind of uniform obviously they're going to make them to be custom made so the lance handguard doesn't hit you in the knee when you're riding in this saddle in the upright position and here is my banner the cross is the knight's cross uh, which was you can date from anywhere between 1680 and 1775 but it was used much earlier than that it's a fairly standard uh, polish pattern or germanic one as well sold and sewn in reverse on each color it is 390 centimeters long, 79, the real ones were 79 centimeters wide at the joist, but mine's actually about 110 centimeters because I uh, got the conversion rate on centimeters wrong. Whoops, and that's the wind. And it is 104 meter, centimeters from the ho hoist to the fork, which you'll see in a minute. There are nine original Hussar pennants in the Polish Army Museum and two of this pattern that still survive. I made it out of red and white 
polyester that I had laying around I, that I bought specifically for this purpose. I got it at a dollar a yard, so I elected to use it instead of silk because of the expense and because I wanted it to be very, very durable and for me not to have to worry about getting it dirty or rolling in the mud at Penzik or blowing down in one of the you know Penzik hurricanes or whatever. And uh, I'd, I'd feel bad if I had to waste many yards of silk in the, by rolling them around in the mud from a storm. So I elected to go with the polyester. In a moment, I'm going to put all these pieces together so you can see what it looks like all together. Here are all the pieces put together, like I said. Four inches long from top to bottom. It's still a work in construction. I still have to fix the, uh, the join here, but this is what the, the finished product is going to look like. You can see the polyester does a really 